In this video, we're going to be building out our level one obstacle data. So you can see we have our repeating obstacles here that are passing up the screen. We do have the collision detection turned off, but this is how we can build out a, a path that the bottle can take. So we can look at our game kind of like this. If this is our screen height, then this gray box is essentially our screen height and a level is going to be four times that. So we basically will have four of these screens to work with. And then we will have our rows within here. So we can imagine that this is one row like we have now. And currently this one row is just looping through, but we might want to set up different obstacles on each row. And then we also would want these obstacles to vary based on each row. So maybe on this row, it would look like this. And on another row, there might just be two on a different side. So we want a way to build out these rows and then allow those to loop through. One design decision that I am making in this app is that there's basically going to be five columns and then these obstacles can be placed within the five columns, but there's never going to be variation in them that isn't kind of a strict column setup. So it won't, it won't really ever be like this where they're, they're staggered and they will always kind of fit to a grid, but there will be room that you can still go around because I'm also not going to position these right next to each other like this. There's going to be always space in between. So as long as there's one gap in the row, the bottle will be able to go through because there'll be kind of a, a blank row in between each of the actual rows. So we can go ahead and create a new file within our game and call this the level data. And this is going to be a simple class called level data. So I'm going to go through this in a little bit different of a way and kind of do a lot of uh, pasting of the code that I've already written and just explaining it. So I'm going to start by showing you this obstacle row function. This kind of depends on a lot of other stuff, which we will build out along the way. So you can see this list right here is an obstacle row and it's returning obstacle data, which is not defined yet. But this obstacle row is ultimately going to become what we have kind of what we see right here is that one row and it can have up to five items. So each item is just a different obstacle type, which the obstacle types we have right now are also not defined, but they're going to relate to each of our type of obstacles. So trash, water, fire. Let's define the obstacle type and I'll do that right within this file. And the obstacle type is actually just going to be an enum and it's going to kind of relate to each of those different obstacle types. Currently the, the bin, the recycle bin and the trash bin are actually not obstacles. So that is a refactor that needs to be made. I'll actually come back and do that afterwards. So right now we can just worry about the, the three obstacle types that we have, which are the trash, the water and the fire. So next is this obstacle data. And this is also just going to be a simple class. And this is what's going to be returned in this obstacle row. And ultimately this obstacle row is what's going to be returned into our onload here. So if we're looking at what is happening here, we need kind of two things to add for each one of the elements in our row. And that's going to be the actual obstacle itself. This could actually be looked up by this obstacle type. And then we're also going to need the position. And this position is going to be specific to each of the the items, of course, in the row. The obstacle data, which is what's going to be returned from this obstacle row, is going to just be the position and the type. So we can also add this class here for the obstacle data, and we will need to import the component so we can use the vector. So obstacle data is basically just going to tell us if it's a trash object with the obstacle type, and then it's going to give us a position for that trash object. So you'll also notice that this obstacle row is taking an integer for the row. And this kind of is going to relate to how we define our level. Let me actually just paste in what level one is going to look like, and then that will hopefully make this part make sense. Okay, so here is what level one is going to look like. And again, our obstacle row is still not complete, but, but for each level, we're going to create another list. And this is just going to be a list of, ultimately, it's going to be a list of these obstacle data points. So this obstacle data class here, again, is just a position and an obstacle type. 
So we're just going to have a bunch of these positions and types. And that is what the list is going to be for, for our level. So it's kind of multiple layers of this, but you can think of it as this level one list here is going to be the list with all of our obstacle points. And it's basically going to allow us to create a long list of these, these ads to our world. So you can see we're passing in the row and then our obstacle row itself has those five items it can have. We always want to make sure that one of the items is blank or else the player won't be able to get through. But we'll just put one at item one and then this one has one at item two and item five. And the row is just incrementing and then the, the obstacle items are kind of in different locations throughout as you go down. But yes, we have 11 uh, different rows for this first level. And now we can go back to our obstacle row and finish updating this. So we are just missing a couple of these constant values. So first off is the obstacle spacing, which if you look at what this is used for, it's, it's basically defining what the Y position is of this obstacle. And we're always going to know what the Y position is because the Y position is going to be based on the row itself. So when we pass in row zero or row one or row two, we're just going to be multiplying that by a spacing value. And that spacing value is essentially just going to be the size of the obstacle plus a bit of uh, padding. We can define these as kind of variables on our level data class itself. And the obstacle spacing here is going to be the obstacle size, which is a constant that we have in our constant file. And this is, again, just the size of our, of our obstacles. And then we're just going to add to it the player height times two. And the player height is not defined actually yet in our constants. But let me add in the player width and height that the final version is going to use. And so the player height here is actually just going to be 150. The player is the player actually needs to be refactored to use that as well, but I will come back to that. So yes, this obstacle spacing is essentially just saying, let's take the obstacle size, which in this case is the 216. And the 216 is actually important here. So if you do the 1080 and divide that by five, it's going to be the 216, which is our, our five columns then. So that is important. And then the player height here is important to use as well so that the player has room to go around the obstacles. And that is what will make this obstacle spacing. So that is basically how we're going to get the different rows and just be able to use this row integer and multiply it by that obstacle spacing. Next, what this uh, obstacle row function is doing is basically just checking if that item was passed in. So if we got an item for these five items, we're just going to position it based on where it should be in the, in the column. So we always know what the Y position is because they're always going to have the same Y position, but the X position essentially is going to be based on the width of the screen. So for instance, the third one is always going to be in the center, which is just zero. And then for one, it's just going to determine what this left side is and then position it there. Same for item two, it's going to use the left side and then add another fifth of the game width. So we do make use of this left and right side, which we also have to define. So let me add these in up here. The left side, yeah, is the negative game width divided by two. So again, we're starting at zero, zero. So we're just going over to the left and then we're going to add back that half of the obstacle size. So that is going to fix all our issues here. To kind of very high level summarize what this row is doing is we can pass in these five types. And if this is passed in, then we're going to create a obstacle data point with that position, which would either be one, two, three, four, or five. Basically what I was showing you back here, one of these five positions. And then that Y position is just going to be based on our row that's passed in. So since we created our level and we are calling those obstacle rows. And this is again calling essentially 11 obstacle rows, which will then repeat. We can now use level one data and add this data to our actual world here. So we're very close here, but there is still actually one 
last kind of major thing we need to do, and that is to load this level data. So before the onload, we're going to add this other function, which is going to be called load level. And this is going to take a list of obstacle data. And then this is where we'll pass in level one. And the first thing we will do in here is actually just remove any obstacles that are currently on the screen. And then we're going to go through each of the items in our level data and check which obstacle type it is. So as we were saying before, the obstacle data is just going to have an obstacle type, which is just an enum. So it's not the actual obstacle, it's just the type. So we're going to check that obstacle type within the level data. So basically each of the items in this obstacle data list is just going to be an obstacle type. And then when it's that trash type, add that trash obstacle at the position and the position will be that data, that data point for the item, which is in our obstacle data. So this is kind of what we were already doing. We're just now pulling these values directly from our level data. And then we'll have this obstacle, which we will add to the screen. Now, these two down here, again, are not working because these are the ones that I commented out. So I'm just going to remove that. Now we need to call load level and then give it level one data. This is set up so later we can add, of course, different levels. So let's go ahead and load the level and then we can call our level data. And then we're going to just call level one here. So if we rerun the app now, you'll see we have our different rows here and it is a varying amount of the obstacles. One thing that maybe will make this clear as well that I can just show you as an example is back in our level data. If we do add a trash obstacle for all five of these, you'll see that is kind of our full block there. And actually everything in level one is, is trash right now. So if you change these, you can see we get those different obstacle types.